Welcome to working with JSON data in PostgreSQL versus MongoDB. I'm joined by Darshan Range Gauda, founder at ScaleGrid.io, who will discuss both the functional and non-functional aspects, such as scale and performance of handling your JSON data. My name is Lindsay Hooper. I'm one of the Postgres conference organizers, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. Let me tell you a little bit about your speaker. Darshan specializes in V1 products and services, as well as forming and growing development teams within startups. He has in-depth technical knowledge and expertise in the area of enterprise software, virtualization, and cloud services. Prior to founding ScaleGrid, Darshan spent nine years at Microsoft. That's it for me. I'm gonna hand it off to Darshan. Take it away. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. So I am Darshan, I'm the founder of uh, ScaleGrid.io. And uh, essentially what we do at ScaleGrid is we provide uh, fully managed services and uh, we support various databases, Postgres, MySQL, Redis, MongoDB. Uh, so we have uh, you know, worked a lot with both Postgres as well as uh, MongoDB and uh, for storing JSON data, uh, we have learned a uh, few things along the way. So this presentation is an attempt to share some of our learnings from that. Okay, let's, uh, without further delay, let's jump in. Uh, let's start with the basics, you know. Uh, first question is, you know, what is JSON? Uh, JSON stands for uh, JavaScript Object Notation. Uh, it's essentially an object serialization format that was uh, popularized uh, in JavaScript. Uh, it's an open standard. It's uh, you know documented in RFC 7159, and uh, I would say today it's the most popular format uh, to serialize and store objects. And as you can see in the graph, you know it is going up and to the right. So the next question, you know, we usually get asked is, you know, hey, Postgres is a is a you know relational database. So let's say, why does Postgres uh, need to care about uh, JSON? And uh, in my opinion, there are you know, two, three good reasons uh, for Postgres to, to handle JSON. And uh, the first one uh, that you know, we usually encounter uh, is, the re is the need for schema flexibility. Uh, you know, there are a lot of business cases uh, where there are a lot of transient columns. Uh, columns are uh, you know, uh, changing on a frequent basis. They are, they are getting added and they're getting removed. And uh, if you go with the traditional relational model and uh, if you have a large data set, and uh, the DML operations can get uh, quite hairy, right? So in these sort of scenarios where you have a lot of transient columns, you know, this could be in the analytic scenario, tagging scenarios, uh, a lot of event tracking scenarios. Uh, the schema flexibility that is offered by JSON is very important. The second scenario uh, where I see JSON uh, very useful is, you know, when you're dealing with a lot of uh, nested objects. And uh, sometimes it might be easier to store these nested objects as JSON and uh, query them in JSON rather than trying to normalize them and store them in different tables. Third case that we typically see uh, is uh, you know, when you're dealing with other external systems that are sharing data in JSON. Uh, for example, we have a lot of customers who, who store Stripe data uh, in, uh, in their database and you know, Stripe provides uh, common format for Stripe data is JSON. So uh, that might be another reason why you need to deal with uh, JSON. Uh, JSON support in Postgres has, you know, has gotten progressively better over time. So let's kind of get a high level overview of the timeline and then we can uh, jump into each release and I'll go into the details. So initial support was in, uh, as you can see, was 9.2 for the JSON data type not to be confused with you know, JSON B data type. And we'll go into those details. Next release uh, was a 9.4 release, uh, which added support for uh, JSON B. And uh, the next significant release I would say is the PG-12 release, which added support for uh, SQL JSON and JSON pod. And SQL JSON is essentially the uh, SQL standard supporting JSON as a first class feature. And I'll go into that as well. Comparing this with MongoDB, you know, initial releases of MongoDB were in uh, early 2010. And uh, the next major sort of significant change in the storage was you know, when Wired Tiger was acquired, that was in uh, 2016. So the first release, uh, the first release for JSON in Postgres was in 9.2. Uh, basically Postgres added support for the uh, JSON data type. 
and uh, the JSON data type, you know, uh, essentially is basically think of it as a string field uh, with some JSON validation added, right? And uh, it's actually very simple. And uh, I would I would I would say it's an initial release. And uh, most people today who are working with JSON and Postgres will be working mostly with JSON B and not uh, JSON. And for example, you know, JSON does not you know have any index support or anything like that. And uh, the, 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 the common data type that you're going to use in Postgres is the JSONB data type uh, that was released in 9.4. You know, JSONB stands for, you know, JSON binary or, you know, JSON better depending on um, whom you ask. So it's essentially a binary data structure. Uh, it is used to store uh, JSON data and I will go into the details of the data structure. And uh, it has great support for various indexes that you can add as well. And uh, in PG-12, uh, uh, like, like I pointed out earlier, uh, uh, Postgres added support for the SQL JSON standard. And uh, one of the important parts of that release is uh, supporting JSON path, uh, which is kind of an, you know, uh, an expression syntax for querying JSON. It's a very powerful intuitive engine for uh, querying JSON. You know, there have been uh, many improvements to JSON path in PG-13 as well. And uh, there are a lot of interesting sort of, uh, you know, improvements planned for JSON support. Uh, you know, I've included a link to the JSON roadmap. Uh, it's put together for the Postgres Pro guys who implemented uh, JSON support. And you know, like I pointed out earlier, uh, if you are working with JSON and Postgres, uh, you are mostly going to be using uh, JSONB, right? And uh, however, there are a few cases where the JSON data type uh, might also be useful. You know, for example, you know, the JSON data type, you know, will preserve the white space in the original JSON. Uh, it will also preserve the ordering of the keys. Uh, it will preserve duplicate keys. And uh, it's also a little faster to ingest uh, than uh, JSONB. And, uh, you know, uh, so, you know, if you have scenarios where you're just sort of uh, ingesting JSON data, uh, just validating it, but not really processing it, uh, then, uh, you know, JSON uh, might make sense for you. But, you know, uh, in most cases, uh, JSONB is what you should be using. And, you know, when I refer to JSON support in Postgres, you know, I'm, good, I'm typically referring to JSONB. Uh, before we dive into the details, you know, there are some broad um, patterns and anti-patterns for using uh, JSONB in Postgres. And I'm just gonna briefly touch on it before we get into all the details. So one question, you know, we frequently get asked is, hey, now that we have uh, JSONB, do we even need uh, uh, columns anymore, right? You know, why not just, uh, you know, put everything into uh, like a, a JSONB column, you have an ID and a JSON primary key, and then put all your data in uh, JSONB and uh, not use column anymore, right? So uh, essentially what I would say is, you know, columns are still uh, the most efficient way to store and query data in uh, JSON. Uh, there are some uh, high-level limitations in uh, JSONB, and I will go into the details of those limitations. And the design pattern that we typically suggest to our customers is, uh, you know, if a column is uh, is appearing in all your JSON data, uh, if a field is appearing in all of your JSON data, it's probably better off as a column. So the the more stable fields in your data set, you want to still use them as columns and use uh, JSONB as a catch-all for you know, variable, temporary, or intermittent columns. I think that gives you the best of both worlds. You can handle uh, the intermittent data with JSON and you can use our traditional column structure for all fields that are stable. So jump in a little bit about into some of the you know, uh, high-level drawbacks that I talked about. So there are a couple of drawbacks at a high level. You know, there are some storage issues and there are some statistics collection issues uh, that you need to be aware of before you jump into it. And there are workarounds for both of them. To get into the statistics collection, uh, Postgres typically collects stats on the data distribution uh, for all of your columns. And uh, essentially, you know, this uh, helps the query planner in, in that you know, it, it can keep track of you know, what, is the, what are the most common values in your data set, you know, what fraction of your values are null, and uh, this is really useful when you have ordered uh, data like you know, integers or strings. Uh, it can also keep track, uh, it also keeps a histogram of the distribution of your uh, values. So the query planner can make some really intelligent decisions around uh, you know, how to you know, work with the table. 
Uh, in JSONB currently today, it doesn't, uh, the query, you know, Postgres doesn't collect any statistics about JSONB columns. Uh, so it's the query planner is essentially running blind. And so it could make some wrong choices you know, or, you know, in, in some cases. So the more detail, you know, I've uh, included a link to a blog post from the heap.io guys who ran into one such case and they have uh, blogged about it in detail. Uh, the next uh, you know, topic I want to talk about is, you know, is, is how JSONB stores the keys. Uh, uh, currently, you know, the way JSONB is implemented, it could result in some uh, storage bloat. And uh, one of the reasons are the keys are also stored along with the data. So again, this completely depends on your uh, you know, data set. And uh, ideally, you know, in the long run, what, we, what would be good is to you know, extract the keys to like a table level hash table or a data structure and basically refer to those keys instead of actually storing the keys in the data itself. You know, we have seen some customers who have been able to reduce their data footprint uh, by sort of uh, using uh, smaller key names instead of you know, very descriptive uh, key names. And uh, you know, Postgres uh, relies on uh, Toast for uh, out of line uh, storage and compression and I will jump into that as well. And uh, we did some very simple uh, you know, basic tests uh, you know, around the compression of data. And again, these are very simple, uh, very subjective tests. So, you know, you should, uh, you know, you know uh, test this with your data to validate, you know, in some of the sample JSON I'm using with about 10, 11 gigs of data, you know, with, with Postgres, we were able to compress it to about 8.7 gigs. And uh, if you compare that with, you know, MongoDB, uh, Snappy compressed it to about, uh, you know, eight gigs. And uh, you know, Zlib compressed it to about you know 5.3 gigs. So you know, it's it's decent compression, but it's not great. So that's something you know you want to keep in mind. Again, this is very subjective. You know, it, it depends a lot on how many keys you have. You know, what the length of your keys is. Uh, it also depends on you know uh, how your uh, data gets compressed by Toast as well. So talking about Toast and, and uh, essentially Toast, just uh, Toast stands for Oversize Attribute Storage Technique. Uh, you know, it's probably the, you know, the coolest acronym that I've come across. And essentially, you know, it is a way for uh, Postgres to store you know, uh, large uh, data types. And uh, you know, if you uh, simplistically, essentially, you know, uh, the way it works is, you know, when your uh, data size is, uh, column data size is greater than the tuple threshold, which is default to KB, uh, Postgres will attempt to compress the data and fit it in the two KB. You know, if it doesn't work, you know, it is uh, basically moved into out of line storage. This process is called toasting. And uh, by default, toasting also includes uh, compression. So essentially your data is compressed, stored out of line. And uh, when the data is accessed, essentially it will be detoasted, you know, and uh, accessed, decompressed, and then uh, used in Postgres. And as a user, uh, you can control these uh, uh, you know, strategies. Uh, Postgres provides strategies where you can set the storage strategy <coughs> per column. Uh, the default is uh, extended, uh, which, which allows for outer line storage and compression. Uh, but in some cases, you know, you might notice some CPU overhead uh, or maybe you don't need the uh, compression. So uh, you can also turn off the compression. You can set the storage strategy to external. Uh, this will essentially give you out of line storage, uh, but uh, there is no compression. So, you know, if you expect your uh, JSON uh, data set to vary, you know, especially as you go about 2KB. Uh, so, you know, I would recommend you to run some tests around this. Uh, to ensure that the toasting, detoasting process, you know, does not add uh, a lot of overhead to your uh, data access. A little bit about uh, the data structures. So I've, I've pulled in some, you know, sort of high level, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, block diagrams about um, how uh, JSONB data is stored. It, it's a fairly simple uh, data structure. And, you know, as you would expect, you know, it's a tree structure used to store JSON. And, uh, and at the top of the dot, the top of the structure, you know, it stores the size, and then there is a hierarchy of nodes. And uh, each node essentially has, you know, a header, and uh, there is a variable section which stores the, the keys and the values. 
And uh, if you contrast that with uh, Bison used by MongoDB, it's again very similar. There is a size, there's a hierarchy of nodes, and uh, each node has got a header and a value. So it's uh, strikingly similar in how it's implemented. And uh, JSON B, you know, diving into the operators, you know, JSON as pa Postgres as part of JSON support supports uh, you know a number of operators, a number of functions, and I'm not going to go through the uh, entire list of uh, operators uh, at this point. And what I've done is uh, I'm just going to like uh, talk about the high-level uh, families. Uh, so there are the member operators uh, where you can access. Uh, you know, uh, members of JSON. Then there is the contains operators, and this is the at greater than uh, uh, operator that you have. You know, you can easily use it uh, to check, you know, if a JSON B, if a particular JSON B structure is present in another JSON B structure. And uh, third family I want to talk about is the existence operators. Uh, this is the question mark, and then there is the and and the or versions of it, uh, where you can check for the existence of keys in JSON. And the last uh, family is the at at operators, which are basically the JSON path operators. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll walk through some of the you know, examples uh, with these operators uh, in the indexing uh, section. And like I alluded to earlier, uh, Postgres also provides you know, a wide variety of functions uh, to work with JSON and they're broadly divided into uh, creation functions, and uh, processing functions. And I'm not going to go through all the functions here, uh, but you know, I've included a link to the documentation so you can go in and take a look at that. Uh, comparing this with uh, MongoDB, uh, MongoDB query language you know, is essentially based on uh, the JSON syntax. So in some ways it's, you know, it works a little bit better with JSON. For example, you know, if you want to find, you know, like let's say I have a sample books database. If you want to find this, uh, all the books in the database, uh, this would be equivalent to select star. Uh, you know, you can say db.books.find and pass in like a, an empty object. It will find all the uh, books in that uh, collection. Similarly, you can also sp specify, you know, filters. So you can, I can say db.books.find and uh, uh, you can essentially say publisher and you can specify a particular publisher. And you can do uh, array operations as well. Uh, for example, in this case, you know, I have an array called tags and, uh, and I'm trying to find all books that have these uh, red or blank tags, so you can pass that in. And uh, you can throw in, you know, and and or operators as well. Uh, they have their own special sort of uh, uh, dollar syntax to specify all these operators. You know, it could be dollar or, dollar and, dollar less than, dollar greater than. So you can specify, you know, fairly complex uh, conditions in that query language. And of course, you can uh, query nested documents. In this case, you know, there is a document called size and you can query one of the nested fields inside that particular document as well. And uh, let's say you have an array of objects or a nested array of objects. And uh, this query language, you know, handles it uh, fairly easily. For example, you know, uh, you can query all the objects stored in the array and you can uh, uh, query for a particular property of that object as well. And uh, this sort of stuff, uh, is, 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 is a little hard to do in, um, in Postgres without having to unwind the array. Uh, this is pre-PG12. After PG12, you have some options with JSON path. And uh, the last one I want to talk about is you know, how you project to return only certain fields from a particular query. And again, this is slightly difficult to do in Postgres prior to the JSON path release. Uh, but in, you know, here in the Mongo query language is very simple, you know, as part of the query, you can also you know, specify, uh, you know, what fields in the JSON you want to get uh, project. And uh, next next up, I want to dump into, I want to jump into some of the, you know, uh, indexes. And uh, this is my favorite topic in uh, Postgres. So we can talk about uh, the various indexes in uh, JSONB and uh, what are the options they are. And we can compare and contrast this with uh, uh, MongoDB as well. And at this point, I want to check with Lindsay if there are any questions that we want to take or do we want to like proceed ahead? Yeah, I just uh, so far have one question um, and it's what type of access speed penalty do we have from compression of JSON data? I think that's a, you know, a great question. And uh, ultimately the 
the access speed penalty also depends uh, you know a lot on your uh, let me skip back on your data set now first of all you know you have to make sure that it's actually compressed and toasted uh, if it, if your data set is small you know they might you know not be any toasting happening at all so it might be stored in line uh, so you have to first you know it depends on the data set you have to see uh, you know uh, whether it's getting toasted and uh, typically we see cpu overhead uh, when uh, your data gets uh, toasted and uh, so my uh, our hypothesis is that you know as your data gets larger the toast overhead will get lar you know uh, will get more uh, but you know we ran some quick tests and uh, you know the, the the tests have not backed up their hypothesis the overhead is sort of remaining the same you know as your data uh, grows from you know 2 kb 4 kb 5 kb 10 kb so we were running some basic tests uh, so we're going to dig into that deeper and uh, we'll probably come out with a blog post comparing uh, the overhead as your uh, you know, JSON data gets large. And uh, at a high level, right, uh, Toast provides compression using PGLZ. And uh, this, uh, it's, it's kind of like a generic compression across all data types. It's nothing specific to uh, JSON. Uh, and uh, there are some, uh, you know, if you, if you, if you, if you uh, go to the Postgres Pro guys uh, who worked on JSON, they have a few extensions that can do a better job of compressing JSON. For example, uh, they have an extension called ZSON, uh, Z S O N, uh, that can you know essentially build a dictionary of your keys and uh, help you uh, compress uh, your JSON even more. So there's a lot of work happening in this uh, site. So let's jump back into it. <clears throat> so at high level, you know we're going to dig into uh, three types of uh, indexes uh, for JSON B: the Gin indexes, the B tree indexes, and the hash indexes. In MongoDB, typically when you when you uh, see a customer setup, it's mostly going to be B3 indexes. Uh, there are they do have uh, text indexes in MongoDB, but they are not very widely used. Uh, they've gotten better in the in the newer releases, uh, so you will see more of that. But in most cases, it is uh, you know uh, B3 uh, indexes in MongoDB, and uh, it's mostly exp what you would call expression indexes in uh, Postgres. So let's dig into the Postgres side of things first. So GIN stands for uh, a generalized uh, inverted index. Uh, so essentially it is kind of like a uh, inverted index. I, you know, I, I won't go into the details of what an inverted index is and how it works. Uh, so essentially GIN uh, you know, supports two operator classes for JSONB. There is the default one called the JSONB ops and uh, there is an extra variant called the JSONB path ops, and I will uh, deal with, I'll explain both of them. And uh, JSON is the more general one, you know, it will index uh, each key and uh, each value in the JSON. So it, it supports the uh, largest number of uh, operators. And uh, JSONB path ops, you know, only supports a couple of different operators and it indexes only the values, but not the keys. So let's look at a, you know, before we jump, jump into the examples. Uh, so uh, I just put together some sample data. Uh, so essentially think of this as kind of like a, you know, a book database, you know, with the ID and author and ISBN and some extra uh, JSON data. It's, it's a very simplistic database. So if there are any book database, if there are any librarians in the audience, then I'm going to apologize in advance uh, for the simplicity of the model. And, uh, and if you look at the JSON again, it's, uh, you know, it's fairly simple JSON and it's quite random and made up at this point, uh, but there are multi-levels, there are tags, there are multi-level tags, there are arrays of objects called friends. Uh, there are some uh, Boolean properties, there are some array properties called keywords. This is just so that we can exercise you know, all the different uh, functionality as well. So let's start with something really simple. You know, let's say you want to find out, you know, you know, what are all the books that are available in Braille or the books that are available in hardcover, right? So let's start with gin indexes. And our first step here would be to sort of add a, you know, gin index. And that's the first line you see over here. We'll create an index on the uh, data field and we'll use it, uh, we'll use gin index for that. And this makes it really easy for us to query. We will say, you know, select star from books uh, where the data uh, question mark braille essentially this is the existence operator and what you're telling postgres is you know are there any um, books where the data json b field contains the braille keyword 
and as we expect, you know, it finds uh, the results for us. And uh, if you do an explain analyze here, uh, you can see that it's actually, it's, it is using the gin index and it's doing a bitmap index. So this is going according to plan. Similarly, there are variants of the existence operator. There is an or variant where you can search for sort of multiple keywords. There is an and variant where you can search for multiple keywords existing as well. So in this case, let's say we wanted to find books that were in Braille or in hardcover. You know, you could do the same thing. You can save a data and then you can use the exists and or operator and you can specify an, uh, an array of, uh, you know, keywords that you want to find. So in this case, you know, it will find you books that are using either of these keywords. And as you can see, it's still using the uh, gin index to find. Now the drawback of these, um, existence operators and uh, is that they only work on top level keys. And uh, this is where we see a lot of uh, people stumped using these uh, existence operators. So if the key is not in the top level, then you know it doesn't use the index and it will result in a, a sequential scan. So for example, uh, in this case, you know, uh, instead of searching for a top level key like hardcover or uh, let's say braille, I'm going to look for a nested key. So for example, in this case, you know, let's say we select star from books where the data of tags contains some key. And uh, the, so here the gin index doesn't support it because the existence operators only support top level uh, keys. And uh, you know, this is a significant uh, you know, a problem we see a lot of the customers. Here. So the way to sort of work around this problem is to use um, you know, expression indexes. And essentially you have to create your own expression indexes uh, for the fields you are interested in. So in this case, you know, since we queried the uh, data of tags, uh, if you want to work around this issue, <laughs> the way to do that is to add like a gin expression index on data of tags. And um, in general, you know, uh, when you're working with JSONB data, you know, I would, uh, you know, uh, rec recommend people, uh, you know, work with um, expression indexes and basically index, you know, just the fields they want instead of indexing the whole JSONB column. So in this case, you know, let's go ahead, we can create an index on the data of tags field. It says still a gin index. And uh, if you see this time, <laughs> when we do a select star from books uh, where the data of tags contains a particular key, uh, you can see that uh, you know, uh, the, index, the operator is able to use the index. And uh, if you look at the explain analyze, um, you can see that it's basically doing a bitmap index scan of that particular index. Okay, so essentially, you know, the moral of the story is, you know, whenever you're working with JSONB in Postgres, make sure you're always doing an explain analyze uh, to check and make sure that the right indexes are being used. The next operator I want to talk about is the is the is the contains operator. This is the at greater than, and you know, I wish these operators, you know, they had uh, more easier names you could use, but unfortunately, at greater than is the best we can do at this point. So. Uh, these operators, you know, essentially you can use them to see uh, if uh, you know, a particular JSON on the right matches the one on the left. And this is the variant we're going to talk about. So if you take the previous example that we used where we are looking for books, you know, that have the Braille tag, you know, it's, you can do the similar sort of query with instead of the existence operator, uh, you can do it with the, you know, at greater than operator. So here in this case, we will say, you know, select star from books. Uh, you know, where, uh, you know, the data can, you know, contains the Braille equals to two track. And uh, as you can see here, uh, you know, it is able to leverage the index as well, and it's able to get the job done. Uh, these uh, path operator, it can be multi-level and you can, uh, and you can nest it uh, to an arbitrary level depending on your uh, JSON data. So in this case, I will uh, look for not just a top level tag, but I can say publisher and the value you can provide it as well. And as you can see, it still uses the gin index and uh, you can nest it to sort of any arbitrary level, right? So you can say, you know, tag contains key, you know, key with field one, which contains field one, which has value one. So you can essentially arbitrarily nest this and uh, it is still uh, able to leverage the gin index. There's also another way to do this. There is the there is another operator uh, in um, uh, in uh, in JSON called uh, the the greater than hash operator, which is essentially you can specify a path to query. 
you know, but uh, GIN indexes don't uh, support those operators. So you need to be careful with that. So most of these uh, indexes that we talked about so far, GIN indexes, they are the default JSONB uh, ops operator class. And uh, JSONB also supports uh, a variant called the JSONB path ops. Uh, it's essentially an option to reduce the size of the uh, GIN index. And uh, as, we, as I pointed out earlier, uh, right, when you use the default option, the JSONB ops option, uh, you know, all the keys and the values are indexed. Uh, whereas if you use the path ops option, uh, essentially it will uh, index only the values in the data. So because of that, uh, you know, your index uh, tends, tends to be smaller. Again, your, uh, uh, your savings will depend on uh, you know, your data set. You know, on this simple data set of about a million books, um, you know, I created like a, a path ops uh, gin index. And, uh, you know, there were about, you know, 10, 20% of savings in the index size that I just put in. But, you know, it's very subjective. So you have to go and you have to try this on your data set to see how much you would save. And uh, the path ops option, uh, essentially it, uh, it has a limited set of operators it supports. So for example, it only supports the, uh, the path operators, the at, greater than and it, it supports some of the JSON path operators as well. So we can, uh, if you go back and run the previous query that we did, you know, where we're looking for data, uh, which contains tags, which contains a particular key, which contains a particular key, which contains a value, you know, it works uh, very well. You can see that uh, uh, from the explain, you can see that, you know, we were able to leverage the, the path ops uh, index. Uh, but like I know, but like I alluded to earlier, uh, the the path ops option uh, only supports uh, one or two operators. Uh, it, it gives you a more efficient index, but the scenarios are a little limited. Uh, but so if you go back and jump into some of the earlier scenarios we ran earlier, uh, let's say you use the existence operator, you know, data question mark tags, that will result in a. If you don't have an other appropriate index, that will result in a sequential scan. Similarly, if you try to use the path operator to query like any of the uh, interme intermediate uh, JSON objects and not specify the full path to the value, uh, then that will also result in a, a sequential scan. So again, there are a lot of uh, gotchas here. So it depends on your uh, you know, data set and the more important, it depends on what you're querying uh, in your data set. So, uh, so essentially, you know, you might have to look at multiple indexes of different types, depending on what your uh, queries. Any questions on the GIN indexes? Yes, um, I actually just messaged you the question that came in. It says, what do you mean by leveraging the GIN index while using the at greater than operator? So leveraging the GIN index while using the, uh, the at greater than, which is the path index. So essentially, you know, uh, all indexes, uh, they have a list of operators uh, they support. So you want to make sure that the operator you're using uh, is actually supported by the uh, index type you're uh, creating. For example, uh, let's say you want to use the like operator or you want to use, you want to use the equal operator and you create a GIN index, it's not gonna work because GIN index does not support either of those operators. So, so essentially, you know, uh, you have to figure out, uh, first thing is you have to understand your data. Uh, then you have to understand what queries you plan to run on this data, what operators you're planning to use. And uh, based on that, you can create an index, uh, you know, of that appropriate type. So let's uh, jump back in. So the next index type I wanna talk about are the, the B3 indexes. Metri indexes are, you know, probably the most common, you know, index type in uh, relational databases. And uh, if you index an entire JSONB column with a, a Btree index, uh, you know, the only useful operators you have are the comparison operators, you know, the equals, less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, and so on. And essentially what you're doing is you're comparing whole uh, uh, JSON objects to each other. And uh, you know, I guess it could be useful in some scenarios, but you know, it's a very limited use case. So if you are using a B tree index, you know, it's very unlikely that you are indexing a whole uh, JSONB column. And uh, typically, when you use a B tree index, you know, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using an expression index. 
where you are exp you know you are indexing uh, a particular key in the uh, json or it can be a key or a sub key or uh, depending on your needs and uh, these indexes support all the normal uh, you know b tree index operators like you know equality comparison and so on so the example i have here is you know let's say we want to uh, you know uh, extract all books that have like a you know a critic rating greater than four, right? So you can't do this with a gin index. So you need to have a, a B tree index for that. So you know, let's just go in. Let's let you know, what happens if you just try to attempt this query, right? Let's say I do select star from books, and you know uh, where uh, data of uh, critic rating is greater than four. Uh, the first thing you will see is that you will get like a syntax error uh, because uh, essentially once you say uh, data member critic rating, uh, you know, it returns a JSON B object and you know, you're trying to compare it to an integer, so it's not gonna work. So you have to do some additional work. So essentially, you know, if you are in PG 11 plus, you know, there are some additional casting uh, functions. So in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cast the data of critic rating and cast it to an integer and then compare and then it'll go through. Uh, if you are in some of the earlier versions, it's a little bit more ugly. Essentially, what you have to do is you have to use the uh, text operator, like it's, you know, data dash, you know, greater than, greater than, which is like, a, essentially it will return the value as text. So you have to return the, use the text operator and then cast that to integer. Then you can uh, do this uh, query. And uh, since we are using an um, expression index, you know, the index uh, needs to match uh, exactly with the query expression. So, you know, once you have nailed down the expression that we want to query, uh, we can go ahead and create a, a B tree index on this. So you can uh, say, you know, create index uh, using B tree and you can pass in the expression that you want to index in the JSON. Okay. And uh, then if you go ahead and if you, you know, you know, run your query where you say, you know, select from books where the, the rating equals to three, and uh, then you can see that, you know, it's actually using the, uh, the B3 index that we created. And, uh, you know, if, if uh, you know, the equality operator is essentially, you know, what you're looking for, uh, then uh, hash index also uh, become uh, really interesting uh, for you as well. And typically, you know, hash indexes tend to be smaller than uh, B3 indexes. So you can, you know, if uh, you can go ahead and create the hash index, you know, you create index using hash on that particular field. And uh, essentially the only operator that supports is the equals operator and you can uh, use that. And if you can do the, if you see the explain analyze, you will see that it's using the hash index. So there are a couple of, uh, you know, other index types that I want to, you know, uh, talk about a little bit. And uh, one of the other common scenarios we see uh, customers using is, uh, uh, when you are using B tree indexes, uh, people want to use the uh, like operator uh, to basically do like a regex match. And uh, this will work uh, if uh, essentially you are, uh, you know, with B tree indexes, uh, if your uh, expression is basically left anchored, but you cannot use any arbitrary indexes for string matching. So, one of the cool sort of uh, indexes uh, that can help you with string matching is the trigram index. And uh, in general, uh, trigram is basically, you know, uh, you know, uh, basically a sequence of three letters. And uh, when you create a trigram index, you know, Postgres will break up your words into sequences of three letters and index all of them with a gin, uh, gin index. And uh, it's part of an extension. I think uh, the extension is part of the contract package. So you can go ahead, you can create the extension PG trigram. And uh, when you're creating the gin index, uh, you essentially have to specify the gin trigram ops, uh, uh, extension, uh, the option. And uh, this will enable uh, a trigram index on the JSONB data. And uh, in this case, you know, we are creating a trigram index on uh, data of publisher. And after that, you can use any sort of uh, uh, regex that you want uh, to match arbitrary strings on the indexed field. You know, it doesn't have to be left anchored you know, you can, uh, in this case, I'm using, you know, a percentage, uh, uh, something in the middle, like percentage or expression percentage. So it is a pretty cool feature. And, uh, you know, if you are looking for arbitrary string matching, uh, this can work really well for you. 
the next thing I want to talk about is, you know, uh, you know, indexing arrays. Uh, you know, Jin works really great if you're, um, you know, indexing arrays, you know, arrays of strings and arrays of objects. And uh, essentially, you know, you can easily search these arrays, you know, for particular keywords. Uh, so in this case, you know, I have a keyword array on my sample data set and I'm going to create like an index, a gene index on just the keywords array. And, uh, you know, then once the index is created, you can use it, you know, uh, you can use the path operators, you know, at greater than, and uh, you can you use a variety of keywords and uh, essentially, uh, you know, you can search if the particular array contains uh, uh, these keywords. And uh, uh, if you are storing an arrays of objects and if you're indexing them, it gets a little tricky prior to PG-12. Uh, you know, if you're looking for particular fields inside the objects and you want to have some conditions on them, you know, you might need to extract the array and write your own function to do sort of a more in-depth comparison. But after PG-12, uh, working with arrays of objects is much easier using uh, JSON path. And I will, I will dive into that as well. So the SQL standard, you know, uh, now supports uh, JSON. So JSON is a first class citizen of SQL. And this is detailed in, you know, SQL standard 2016. And uh, this basically sort of includes like a generic uh, SQL JSON data model and uh, JSON path, and there are SQL JSON functions as well. And uh, with the PG-12 and the PG-13 release, you know, Postgres has, uh, you know, one of the best implementations of uh, SQL JSON. You know, I've uh, included a link to the PG-12 release nodes where we compare the, the compatibility of uh, Postgres SQL JSON with other databases, and you can see Postgres does really well. I'm going to skip over the SQL JSON data model. You know, it's, it's just basically the definition of what SQL JSON is. And it's going to be, if you're familiar with JSON, it's going to be very similar to that. The most impactful feature uh, that's part of this uh, SQL JSON release in PG-12 is the JSON path release. And what JSON path is, you know, it's basically allows you to uh, specify an expression to query or to project your data. And uh, you are doing this in like, you know, uh, object access notation of uh, JavaScript. And, uh, you know, in some ways, uh, this is very similar to the MongoDB query language. You know, you can refer to a member using dot member name. You can refer to all properties using dot star. You can refer to multi-level properties using dot star star. And if you want to uh, you know, search or if you want to refer to all objects in an array, you can just use the array star operator. So, you know, this gives you sort of a very powerful and intuitive way to query and project your JSON. You know, if you, this is, it's, it's in some ways, it's similar to XPath for XML. You know, if any of you guys uh, you know, have used XPath, uh, JSON path is similar to for JSON. And as part of the JSON uh, SQL JSON standard, uh, essentially it also provides a variety of functions and I've pulled in about, uh, th I've pulled in three main functions you know, JSON B path exists and JSON B path match. You know, they're essentially used to check, uh, uh, you know, uh, your JSON against a particular JSON path expression. And uh, JSON B path query is typically used for projection where you're projecting a subset of the JSON from the what you have stored. And I'll get into examples for all these functions. You know, to start with, you know, we can go with the sort of the original query we used. Uh, where you know in JSON path and you want to find books by a particular publisher, and uh, you know if you're if you're building a where class, you know using the JSON path expression, uh, then you would use the at at operator, and uh, in this case, you know it's very simple. You know instead of using uh, a lot of uh, you know, newer operators, you can just use the dot member name to refer to a property. So in this case, I will say a select star from books where the data at at you can say dollar publisher equals you know, uh, look for the string. And uh, if you see that, you know, if you look at the explain output for it, uh, you can uh, uh, see that it also leverages the gin index that we created on the data object. And, uh, you know, you can uh, get more and more complicated uh, with JSON path, and I'm gonna dig into it a little bit. So if you want to use the uh, filter, uh, JSON path has uh, an option to specify a where class 
is similar to a SQL where clause and you can use the question mark syntax for it. Uh, so in this case, you can say, uh, you know, dollar publisher question mark and you can specify a filter expression and uh, at here in the expression refers to the current object that's been selected. So you can say uh, whether publisher equals to this. So you can add a filter path and uh, you can build fairly complicated, uh, you know, expressions. So for example, in this case, I'm doing a dollar print star, village, which, which essentially selects, you know, all the objects, uh, all the objects that are stored in the print array. And then for each of these objects, you can actually build expressions around it. For example, I will say, you know, uh, at refers to the object that's been selected. You can say style is hardcover, you can do price. So essentially, you know, this JSON path is kind of a language of its own. You know, it has its own filters, it has its own sort of operators, it has its own functions, and you can build, you know, fairly uh, complicated and uh, uh, very powerful uh, queries, JSON queries using JSON path. And uh, you know it's it's very powerful, but you know right now in PG12, uh, JSON path uh, has some uh, limitations, and the most important limitation is that you know index support for JSON path is like you know very limited at this point, and uh, pretty much the only sort of uh, operator that is supported is the you know equals operator that we saw in the previous screen. So you know in the PG12 release, uh, it's going to be very hard to use JSON path as part of the uh, where clause. And uh, I'm still very optimistic about JSON path. I think it's kind of the uh, future for port querying post, uh, JSON data and Postgres. But you know, I think the index support and the various operators will get added slowly over time. And uh, there is another use case, you know, where JSON path is uh, really useful. And uh, this is for projecting JSON. And uh, when we say projecting, essentially, what it means is that, you know, once you have selected your rows, uh, instead of selecting your entire JSON, you might want to project a subset of the JSON. Like for example, uh, you might want to, you know, uh, pick up a particular object in an array, you might want to pick up a particular field and so on. So prior to PG-12, this, all this was manual. So essentially you had to uh, get the J, you can, you can select some fields, but you can't really do a, a lot of uh, complicated querying there. And uh, with JSON path, again, all this becomes really simple. And uh, here we're gonna use the JSON path query function. And that makes it really simple to project whatever portions of JSON that you want. Uh, for example, here in this example, you know, the prints array contains an array of objects. So what I want to do is, you know, let's say you want to only select the last element of that object. You know, you can say dollar prints and you can say dollar dot size to use the size of the current selected object. And um, you can just select the last element. And you can also start to add uh, more expressions here. So for example, uh, let's say we wanted to select only the prints that were hardcover. So you can say dollar prints of star, and then you can also add a filter expression using the question mark operator, and you can say uh, at dot style is equals to hardcover. And what this does essentially, you know, it will take all the array objects, it will filter out the ones that don't match the expression and just return that. And you can also start to chain filters as well. So for example, I can say dollar prints of star, and then I can say at dot style is hardcover, and I can say at dot price is hundred, and then you can uh, build you know fairly complex expression for uh, projecting out just the JSON you want from the selected rows. So this part is you know is still very useful in PG twelve, and hopefully you know as the indexes uh, sort of get added, uh, you know we can start to use JSON path in the where clause as well. And in terms of the roadmap. Uh, you know, there are a lot of improvements to JSON path in uh, PG-12, the date time uh, field has been added. And you know, it's uh, there's a bunch of minor, minor improvements as well. And in terms of the future roadmap, I've included a link uh, to the presentation from the Postgres Auto Oleg from Postgres Pro who did the presentation on the future roadmap. You know, there are thoughts of, uh, uh, you know, uh, unifying the JSON and JSONB into like a unified type called uh, generic JSON or JSON. And uh, the, the, the link I have included here uh, will give you a lot of details. Uh, uh, and uh, that's kind of it at a high level. So I think we still have a couple more minutes. Any of the questions I can answer? The only question I have um, currently, so if you have any questions, please get them in now. 
um, is, a, is that general database question. Um, is there a mechanism to block queries that doesn't make use of indexes? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there are, there are several mechanisms to that. And, uh, you know, if we, if we just go all around with it, you'll usually find it. Okay, another one. Does it make sense to use regular SQL column queries to limit the subset of JSON records that need to be searched? Can you, can, can Eric, can you provide more details on that? So you can all, you can use your regular sort of uh, SQL column queries to do your, do you mean your regular where uh, class to limit the queries? Or are you talking about querying inside the JSONB field? Eric Shapiro asked this. He said, since the JSONB queries are slower, it seems like you should first limit the number of records you need to query by using regular SQL queries and use the JSON query as a subquery. So at a high level, you know, I don't think it's accurate to say JSONB queries are slower, right? I think, uh, you know, if you, if you appropriately index it, if you're using the right fields, I think they will perform just as well. And, you know, as always, you want to limit your uh, filter uh, to target just the required set of uh, rows. Uh, so one quick question I would like to ask is, um, so uh, this JSONB and JSONB path, um, are pretty good for querying purpose with the proper indexing. But, uh, you know, I have seen um, in our experience that if you do a lot of writes to some of the fields inside the JSON column, mm -hmm. then, then the performance would be bad when compared to the document databases. Can you show light on that? Yeah, so in some ways, you know, whenever you update the JSON thing, you know, the whole column has to be updated, right? So. Uh, so essentially, you know, that uh, if you are storing a uh, large amount of data in a single column and you update a small field, you know, it's still an update to the whole uh, column data. So that's probably the reason why you're seeing the performance. Oh, it, because it's like, a, it's stored like a toasted column on the disk. So that's yeah. why even the one field got changed, the whole toasted object has to be updated. Yeah. So there's just no way for it to update just that one particular field. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That appears to be the questions we have. So with that, I want to thank you, Dashan, for spending a little bit of your late morning with us. Um, I want to thank all of our attendees for, you know, spending your morning or afternoon with us. And I hope to see you on upcoming Postgres conference webinars. Thank you all. Thank you.